Homer lives a very erratic life. Rich, then poor. Famous, then obscure. Horribly deformed, and then more horribly deformed. Homer Simpson is a drunken half-wit safety inspector. Who is marked by his poor decisions and abuse of his three children and his lazy nature. He's neglectful of his son, has nothing in common with his daughter, and one has the feeling that he's just waiting for the baby to get large enough to eat. <laughs> he's a crude drunkard whose stupidity has landed him in bizarre situations that only ever reach a conclusion after 22 minutes, whether it makes sense or not. Homer Simpson's greatest success as a parent are the things he did not do with his children. But does that make him the worst, stupiderest father figure? <laughs> Peter Griffin is a drunken half-wit safety inspector who's marked by his poor decisions, abuse of his three children, and lazy nature. He's neglectful of his son, has nothing in common with his daughter, and one has the feeling he is only tolerating the baby until it's large enough to eat. <laughs> He's a crude drunkard whose stupidity has landed him in bizarre situations that only reach an end after 22 minutes, whether it makes sense or not. It can be successfully argued that Peter Griffin is dumber than his two-year-old infant. But does that make him the worst, dumberest father figure? That's what we're here to find out. Let's meet the geeks and nerds. For Homer Simpson, Teen Geek and Your Geek Leader, it's Patrick McDonald! No beer and no TV makes this man something something. It's Chris Niardi! Be sure that Luke and Han could all fit in that tauntaun if they cuddled really hard. It's Fat Apollo! Mike McCluskey! For Peter Griffin, Team Nerd and Your Nerd Herder, it's Dan Schreiber! He's never gonna give you up. He's never gonna let you down. He's never gonna run around and desert you. He's Mike Gorman! He's the man who reminds me of a babe. A babe with the power. The power of voodoo. voodoo. Voodoo, you do. It's Steven Heisler! Okay, hey geeks and nerds, it's time for initiative. Please roll the dice. Five. Seventeen. Let me go! Oh, nice. You have the choice. Do you wish to go first or second, geeks? We choose to win by default. The two sweetest words in the English language. And defer. Ready? Begin! All right, so nerds, you have two minutes. Please explain to me why Peter is the worst, stupiderest father figure. Begin. Well, grammar, first off. Basically, if you can uh, go through your parenting life um, endangering your children, forcibly trying to abort their children with a coat hanger while they're not looking, and spawning possibly the world's most dangerous supervillain, I don't think calling yourself a good role model is something to put on your resume. Now, if you go on to Almighty Google and you top in Homer Simpson Worst, you get Homer Simpson worst quotes. You get Homer Simpson worst everything else but worst father. Now if you type in Peter Griffin worst, the top result on this Google search is from Time Frickin' Magazine. <laughs> Time Magazine states that of the top 10 worst fictitious figures of all history, uh, Peter Griffin is surpassed only by Lord Vader and, uh, and Jack Torrance of The Shining. The worst father is Peter Griffin over and over again, so the internet moves that Peter Griffin is the worst father in history. I, for one second, the motion. Carried. Never, never in the history of television has a character ever been put down like that. Never. All right, very good. Moving over to the geeks. Please explain to me why Homer Simpson is the worst, stupiderest father figure. Begin. <laughs> 
I guess we're stupider. I guess we're stupider. Very well. Homer is a terrible, terrible father. He's proactively lazy, whereas Peter goes out of his way to abuse Meg. Homer admits himself, it's not easy to juggle a job, a pregnant wife, and a troubled child, but somehow he did it and managed to fit in eight hours of TV a day. Any parent can be judged. You're only as good as your worst child. It's not Bart, it's Maggie. Stewie is adorable of his laser guns and latent homosexuality. <laughs> but Maggie shot an 80,000 year old man in the chest in cold blood. The police caught her and she got away with it. All right, well, I think it, it comes naturally to Homer, right? He's victim of the Simpson gene, which is aptly named. Because it not only promotes foolishness, but baldness as well. And really, I believe that promotes all these conversations that he has with his own brain, which must be some sort of severe psychological disorder here. And most of the time, the brain just responds about food. So it's not even very useful conversations. Troy McClure even told us specifically on the 138th episode Spectacular, that Homer Simpson gets stupider every season. The Simpsons is the longest running television series. And also, Homer doesn't just have a giant yellow dick. He is a giant yellow dick. If you look at Marge's head, that bouffant is not hiding. It's not just head. It's been driven in so many times by Homer. She's almost disfigured by it. <laughs> All right, the Geeks and Nerds, everybody, round one. The next round is the attack round, but before the attack round, we have rebuttal tokens to hand out. For Team Homer, we have Homer. And we have a rubber chicken for them to fight. It's a chicken fight. It is the attack round. Nerds, please explain to me why Homer Simpson is not the worst, stupiderest father figure. Begin. Well, when you're talking about uh, parenting, and trust me, I know about this because my father spent his entire life roaming around North America fathering children. What it all... Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, when it comes down to motive is the thing, and when it comes to Peter Griffin, he clearly doesn't care about the well-being of his children. I will concede that, yes, Homer is a moron, but at the very least, you see him in Lisa's room, you know, apologizing for blowing up her saxophone, or for making Bart retarded, or whatever it was that recycling that week. He has those heart-to-heart -heart moments, yeah. you know? It's touching. It makes you cry. And he gives his young daughter Lisa such a wonderful role model to have to struggle against that she eventually makes it to the presidency of the United States itself. We have a token being turned in. Uh, what point would you care to address? Homer's heart-to-heart -heart speeches and a positive influence on their lives. Okay. The only way that Homer exceeds is through uh, pulling a Homer, which is succeeding entirely by accident. When he tries, when he tries to do his best, he fails completely at everything he does. As quoted by one Lisa Simpson, Homer, we liked your half-assed underparenting much more than your half-assed overparenting. To which Homer replies, but I was using my whole ass. Yet still they love him, do they not? When Bart comes home, for instance, crying for a video game, rather than doing the actual half-assed parenting thing and going out and buying a video game, he dances around and waves and makes funny noise, gives the boy attention, makes him smile, and acts like a good father. Now, when consulting with the internet, if you look on Google and search Homer Simpson, good father. There are a lot of essays that all back us up and conclude that Homer Simpson not only is not the worst stupider his father, but that he is indeed one of the best fathers for his half-assed good parenting. And, of course, I would like to state that when Homer didn't go to church, at the end of that episode, God himself appears and tells Homer that yes, you are a good man and a good father. Homer gets an endorsement from God. <laughs> Moving back over to the geeks. Please explain to me why Peter is not the worst, stupiderest father figure. Begin. Peter may be a bad father, but he supported Chris's art career. 
He, uh, at one point, actually tried to get Meg a boyfriend by uh, sending Quagmire to her rival's party. He actually occasionally listens to Stewie when the show's writers care very little about continuity. Peter also cares enough about his wife to pay for expensive and dangerous liposuction. Homer gained weight so he could go home on disability. I, I don't mean to pull the hipster card, but by the time Peter Griffin came around, being an overweight, alcoholic, abusive father was, you know, kind of mainstream. Yeah. We can definitely fault the Cleveland show. I mean, we can definitely fault American Dad. I mean, we can definitely fault Family Guy for being unoriginal. I feel we really need to take a deep, in-depth look at Cleveland Brown. I mean, Stan Smith. I mean, Peter Griffin. Fuck. We have a uh, uh, token being turned in. What point would you like to address? Uh, the topic of unoriginality, because it's not quite right. All right. Go ahead. The issue is not unoriginality, the issue is evolution, okay? I, no, 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 hear me, hear me out, hear me out. Come on, I turned in a chicken. Obviously, the implication here is that uh, well, via these various spin-offs slash whatever Seth MacFarlane's doing that week, you're implying, aren't you, and you can answer this, that Family Guy is or is not a knockoff of The Simpsons. Is, is that more or less what you're saying? So we're talking about something that came along decades later, used the same archetype, and transcended the original. Therefore, Peter Griffin equals Nathan Philly. I'm just saying. <laughs> is that because they both got canceled by Fox? <laughs> Like that next generation that you hope is the next level. You really want it. You really want it to exceed what the original put down. But when it comes down to the end of the day, it just fails. Let me put it this way: Homer Simpson is Harrison Ford. Peter Griffin is Shia LaBeouf. And if we look at why Peter Griffin is a better father, God love him. Many, many times an episode, Homer attempts to kill his firstborn son. Why, you little... Ah! And only because of his genetically engineered neck, he can't kill him. Peter can't kill his kids, but Homer tries over and over. Very nice. So the, pig, the next round is the pig monkey question. Pig monkey. The pig monkey question is... In order to be the worst, stupiderest father figure, the candidate must show that he is not only a danger to the children that are being raised, but the lessons that he's teaching will lead to more trouble in life. Show how the candidate fails to have any child rearing skills at all. Nerds, you have two minutes. Begin. I would like to read two quotes provided by the internet of things that Peter has taught his children. Hey, zip it. Rule number one, no speaky until the man speaky to you. That's not very nice. He also says things always work out if you do whatever you want without thinking about the consequences. Now this is the core of why Peter is a bad father. He does whatever he wants without thinking about the consequences for his children. In the end, how, what does this lead to? His daughter becoming a man. Also, his son, undoubtedly the greatest criminal mastermind this world was ever going to see, becoming a guy working at a staples. That's not nice. <laughs> so, right, so um, why is Peter Griffin a bad father? Well, first things first, you know, uh, he put me in that damn woman's womb in the first place. I was perfectly comfortable in this damn scrotum, but no, no, he shot me in there with no regard for my safety whatsoever. And then, and then he left me jumping on a bed so I hit my head on the bloody ceiling and flattened me in the shape of a football. Fuck that guy! Revenge will be mine. I'm definitely giving two points yeah. for the trash talk there. So, uh, yeah, the torch passes to the geeks. Begin. Homer Simpson's terrible parenting is wrapped up when he discovers that Bart no longer wants to play guitar. Son. <laughs> if something's hard, then it's not worth doing. You just put that guitar back in your closet with your shortwave radio, your karate outfit, and your unicycle, and we'll go inside and watch TV. What's on? It doesn't matter. 
and honestly, are we forgetting that he is the safety inspector for a nuclear power plant? He not, he not only holds the safety of his family, but everyone in the city as well. You guys want a sneak peek on how The Simpsons are finally going to end? Go! <laughs> oh! And also, his, his idea that something hard isn't worth doing is obviously oh. wrong. Uh -oh. Oh. So, gets his children involved for working for the mob and working for a brothel. Now, I am the parent of two children, and that's bad advice because it pays shit. Okay. Very good. Geeks and nerds for the pig monkey question round, everybody. Let's hear it for them. We have Peter the Chicken Slayer Griffin versus Homer the Snake Whacker Simpson. Nerds, please explain to me a scenario in which Peter Griffin beats up Homer Simpson in a fight. Begin. Well, as we know, Peter fights a giant chicken from time to time every second episode. He has a lot of brawling experience. He can take a licking, a finger licking good, and keep on chicken. I mean, keep on ticking. So what's gonna happen is Homer and Peter are gonna meet on the street. They're gonna give each other an evil eye, and it is on! As he looks over, Homer's body's gonna be gone because he's on a truck! They're gonna keep on fighting and kicking and punching and rolling until finally he gets Homer's head in his hand. And he's lifting his head up in the air. Homer's concentrating on Peter and doesn't look up. And he looks up at the last possible second to see the tunnel, and that extra inch of fluid didn't have a chance. Here's the way I think it might actually turn out. It only ends when child services finally notices what going, what's been going on, and since they've been looking for Peter Griffin for being a shitty father, they have his ass arrested and hauled off to prison. <laughs> Peter Griffin sucks as a dad. Moving over to the geeks. Geeks. Peter has never actually defeated the giant chicken, despite multiple attempts to do so, whereas Homer has held his ground in a fight against the better of the two Bush presidents. There's a reason they call Homer the brick hit house, the immovable object, and the southern dandy. This man can take a beating and he can give it out too. Whether it's a heavyweight boxer, whether it's an ex-president, whether it's his own baby who knocks him with a hammer, Homer can take a beating and keep going. Peter will go unconscious at the slightest hit of a chair, or too many beers, or whatever it's convenient for it to be funny for him to be unconscious. Which is usually given the long awkward silences in the show. Also, one thing Homer has in his corner is a posse. Because he's got a whole town behind him that can help him kick some ass. Whereas Peter's friends are rapidly running away to get their own spin-offs on Fox and soon the FX network. His only friend soon is going to be the guy in the wheelchair and the greased up naked deaf guy. And everybody did an impression. That was awesome. <laughs> could basically just go as Peter keeps on punching and punching Homer on, until he gets tired, at which point he just falls down very comedically and very fast. I think that you take Steven's idea of the entire incredible fight, which I will not repeat because it was so awesome, Thank you. is that instead of hitting the overpass, they roll into a little building called Nielsen Ratings, and suddenly they look up and go, uh-oh, and Peter disappears in a flash of pixels. <laughs> All right, it is the final round. It is the open debate. You have five minutes to bring up whatever you want. Begin. I would like to. I don't even know. 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 I don't all right, now there's been a couple of, uh, of references here now to uh, Family Guy being cancelled. And I would just like to state for the record here that there is one fundamental difference between Family Guy and The Simpsons. First, it's that Family Guy was cancelled, right? But the fans clamored and Fox finally caved under popular pressure and brought Family Guy back. As opposed to The Simpsons, where the fans have been crying and crying and crying, and Fox has yet to listen to them and cave to popular demand and cancel the damn show already. <laughs> okay, you're, you're, you're muddling the, the, the issue here. It's not about the TV shows, it's about the character. And in the character of Homer Simpson, I've prepared a perfect rebuttal. No way. <laughs> I 
think we're also missing the thing about the stupidity. Homer is more a passive stupidity, while Peter is an act of stupidity. Peter could sit at home and get fat and nothing would happen to him. Homer, by his very definition, is like a landline to the stupidity that exists in us all. How the fuck do you all. crash a space shuttle with passive stupidity? <laughs> Just like interrupting passive stupidity. He's not trying to have those things happen to him. Thank God he doesn't have a gun. That's what's different between Peter and Homer. Really? He does care for Meg deep down no, inside. Okay, no, 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 no. When Meg was gonna have strong, like, like a lawsuit against her, he took, he, he, he did the unthinkable. He tried to seduce Luke Perry. He said, I will take a bullet for you, Meg, and he wasn't talking about a gun. Oh God, look out, there's burglars in the house. Peter's, Peter's walking around with a bat. Meg comes out and goes, Dad, Dad, it's me, it's Meg. He beats her over the head with the bat and says, Oh Meg, it's you. And he beats her every chance he gets! On he top of that, he cares, okay, fine. Meg gets pregnant, and the scene is her lying face down on the couch. Peter sneaks up behind her with a coat hanger, and when she sees him coming, his flimsiest of excuses, ah, oh, ah, yeah, I was trying to get the shirt that was under you, sweetie, yeah, yeah, just move out of the way. Bullshit! One thing that Homer does is he continually puts his family at risk with bad financial decisions. Like investing all the family's money in pumpkin futures and then selling them after Halloween. <laughs> in addition to this, Homer can't hold down a job, leading to massive financial problems for his family. Over the course of the show, he's been a grease collector, a beer baron, a clown, a bodyguard, an astronaut, an agent, a quickie mark collector, a blackjack dealer, a pin jockey, minutes, please. Peter, a boxer, a chauffeur, a Peter party, couldn't party, hold down a job at a toy factory that his fucking father owned. Woo! I'm the only father on this panel, and I love my son Harley, my daughter Grace, and little what's-her-name. Well, well, and I've learned to love them through The Simpsons. It is time for final words. <laughs> So, final words, nerds. Uh, uh, hey there, Homer. Yeah, so, uh, you, uh, you're trying to be a father? Huh? Yeah, you're really kids? You a good role model? Huh? Maybe, uh, help with the homework? Yeah, you, uh, maybe, uh, set the example? Yeah. No, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, good job, yeah. <laughs> final words, geeks. Look, Homer Simpson may be a lot of things. He's a liar, a thief, a pig, an idiot, a communist, but he is not a porn star. <laughs> it is time to render a decision. Is the worst, stupiderest father figure, Homer Simpson and the geeks. <laughs> Or is the worst, stupiderest father figure, Peter Griffin? I hereby announce the worst, stupiderest father figure to be Peter Griffin.